Well, hello there. We're going to do a little bit different video today and do a review on this Titan Attachments 57 inch offset bank flail mower. You'll also see that this is sitting on a nice brand new uh, Macy Ferguson tractor and I'm going to do a review on that. Um, at some point in the future, I just want to get a few more hours on it. Uh, but at the same time, I purchased this flail and have already had some issues with it. So usually when I do something like this, I highly recommend it. But if you don't want to watch the whole video, this is not a piece of equipment that I can recommend that you purchase. So as a quick overview for this, the reason why I purchased it is I wanted to be able to mow around my perimeter of my fields without the overhanging branches hitting into the tractor. So this can shoot off to the side and also do embankments going up and down. So let me raise this up a little bit. And then you can see you can offset the distance of it so it comes off past the side of the tractor. And then also at the same time, you can adjust the, the angle of it to do embankments. So you can either go up or down. Now the first issue that I have with this is you know, it does have a nice uh, roller on the back side. Uh, you can see it's, um, now that it's resting on the skid plates here, the roller's just barely off the ground, not a big deal. Um, but they should have made it so you could adjust the height of this, so lower the roller down. I think I'm going to just uh, drill a new hole in here and it's held on by these two bolts and just rotate it uh, down a little bit more. Um, but I really didn't want to have to do that. Uh, this is sitting in its normal position, so the chains hang down to keep debris from uh, coming out through the front. I've already lost one of the chains over here. Now, I've only used this for less than a half an hour, and you may not be able to see underneath it, but there are hammers hanging down here, and they are about a half an inch off of the ground. So essentially, while this is mowing, it scalps everything as it goes along. So um, around here, it just scalps almost right to the ground. And then any small rocks that are sticking up, uh, the blades are just hitting against those. Now one way to raise it up a little bit would be to extend this arm down, which swings this whole thing down more. So the whole thing rides at an angle. Uh, but by doing that, it lifts the front end up and you get a lot of debris uh, shooting out past the chains. So when it's in its normal operating position, it should be as level as possible. In fact, even in my lowest uh, setting here with the three point hitch, it's already at an angle. Now I'm not going to uh, take this off the tractor right now, but it just does come with some little legs to um, support it when it's not attached. And this is the resting position of that. And of course the legs are too short, so I can't dismount that without actually uh, putting a block underneath there. I don't know why they didn't make these longer. It's just ridiculous that they didn't uh, make it two inches longer. Um, but this, uh, my tractor is in its lowest position where I can't uh, lower the three point hitch down any further. So I can't mount this up without having blocks underneath this. So after about using this for less than a half an hour, it started vibrating uh, pretty badly. And usually on a flail, it's because you've lost one of your uh, blades. So checking it out, I am missing one here. It happens when you hit a rock or something real hard, um, the bolts can break, but I did uh, lose a second one. I actually found one of the blades and uh, one of the bolts and the, the bolt uh, did shear off. So, you know, it took a lot of force to break this half inch bolt. Now I don't mind breaking a bolt once in a while and losing a blade. But what I have a problem with is finding broken off blades like this where they've just sheared apart. What's even more concerning are there are a lot more in here with these fractures in them. This one here, the next one down has a fracture in it also. Uh, just about every single one of them, they're starting to break in the same spot. 
Here are another two. This one's fractured in pretty good. And this one's fractured on both sides. I'm surprised it was still holding on at all. So after doing a little detective work, I found that there's essentially two major flaws with the design of these uh, flail blades. Uh, normally when they're running, let's say it's hanging off of the drum, it's always perpendicular to the drum um, by weight. And if it comes along, let's say this bolt here is a rock, as a blade comes along, it would hit against that rock and come flying out of the way, so that way it could continue passing over it. And that's how they are normally set to design. However, with this design, the tip of the blade is actually higher than the bottom of the blade. So if you happen to hit a rock just right, it's going to come along and hit against the bottom of the blade like this. And then at that point, it's going to want to try to move backwards, but because of the distance in here, it can't get any shorter, it's not able to move itself backwards and will actually uh, bend itself inwards. And that's exactly what's happening uh, with these other blades. So even though this blade has a crack in it, you can see another blade here is curved way up. So. What happened is it came in, hammered itself in, started bending it up, probably hit against something else, and they just keep going and hammering themselves off until it finally breaks. And that's mainly because it just it cannot get itself out of the way. Now, here's a different blade that I'm gonna to use to replace these. This is just a piece of bent metal. It's substantially lighter. It's a little bit shorter than these, so I'll actually be able to mow a little bit higher. But what's key about this is this slotted um, pivot point here. So first of all, as it's hanging, the lowest point is the blade. So no matter what, it's always going to hit and move itself out of the way. But in the event that it did hit the back side of this blade, when it hits it, it's able to move itself backwards out of the way because it has all this extra room in here on the blade. So even if it did hit on the bottom, you'd be able to move itself out of the way and then pivot backwards. So this is a substantially better design um, than the other blades. Unfortunately with these, um, you know, they're very common blades, but they're substantially lighter and don't um, chop as much with the heavy brush. But if you're doing mostly grass or light brush, it won't make much of a difference. You know, it's unfortunate that these other blades they could be uh, forged just a hair differently so that that uh, tip is at the bottom here and they could even oblong that hole and these would be a, a perfectly usable blade but um, it just was not designed that way. So I can't buy replacements, the Titan doesn't have replacement blades available so essentially that turned this into a $4,000 hunk of metal that I can't use. So I'm going to risk it and try uh, replacing um, all the blades uh, with these uh, flail blades. I made up these little spacers just out of a piece of black pipe. If you get spacers from McMaster or something like that, they're like 10 bucks a piece. So for pennies I made these up. They don't have to be precise and they'll last through the abuse of everything. So it just goes in here, put the blade in. Last spacer. And I'll keep it more or less contained. This can swing around nicely. I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have to deal with something like this. You would expect to buy a piece of machinery it's actually built fairly well that it would last a little bit longer than a half an hour before you start losing blades on it.
With these new blades, I've now driven it for about two and a half hours mowing around uh, some of my fields. And I really put it through its paces. I've driven this thing over a bunch of stumps, uh, through some pretty thick brush. And I've hit a lot of rocks with it. We have no shortage of rocks around here, whether they're just the surface rocks, or I had a couple that were sticking out of the ground completely and I just ran over them, tried to keep uh, somewhat over them. And I even picked up a couple of rocks and they just tumbled around inside of this and uh, was able to raise it up and release those. So I'm expecting some pretty heavy damage to these blades. Taking a quick peek at most of these look pretty good. There are some that are peened over a little bit. You know, comparing it against the original one, it's got a few dents in there. Most of the cutting edge is gone, but it still whips through the grass without any problem. This one probably saw a couple extra rocks because it is bent pretty well. However, it's not broken, which is sort of a big deal because it will keep cutting even though it's a odd shape like this. Now this one down here is broken off, so it, it's cracked off uh, about a half an inch of the material. Um, but it can still cut. I mean, it's just going to come around and whip. It should get replaced. Uh, one of the benefit of these lighter blades is that even though they don't hammer and cut up the brush as much as uh, some other, uh, those heavier blades, um, it'll keep working and it doesn't throw the whole thing out of balance so it'll just keep running uh, with this broken blade but I will replace this one. One last little problem I had with this was this back skirt. It ripped uh, apart and there's more of it coming off. It's just all that debris and rocks coming out of the back. Um, so that's going to have to get replaced at some point. Um, probably I'll find something with thicker material that can hang down better. Um, this is just a little bit too thin for the abuse that I'm putting it through. So overall, with those new blades, this does a fantastic job. Um, it's just a shame that Titan just doesn't put the right blades on these things and they would have an excellent product. So out of the box, this thing is essentially worthless um, if you're going to try to use it with those hammer blades, especially in this uh, type of environment. If you have any rocks, you just can't use it. Uh, those blades just break off too easily. So if you're willing to spend a little time and replace those blades, it cost me about $100 for a new set for this uh, size, and spending some time to uh, reassemble it, it's not too bad of a mower. It does a nice job on just regular grass and did a great job um, on the smaller brush. Using this weight of blade though, you can't do the heavier brush like what they claim, so you just have to watch out for that. Thankfully, um, I don't really have that heavy of a brush to deal with. So time's gonna tell. Hopefully the gearbox holds out. That's only the next thing that I'd worry about uh, with this. But overall, everything else is working out well. So two thumbs down if you're gonna try to use it as is, and two thumbs up if you spend a little time uh, fixing it up. Once again, thanks for watching. Thank you.